Hi kids. It's Sister Teresa in her gardens again. And today I'm bringing a message to you about a prophet named Micah. Micah was anointed by God to go and prophesy to the Southern Kingdom. Their brothers up in the North, in the Northern Kingdom, they had already been prophesied to and the verdict was out on them and Assyria was gonna come and take them captive. That hadn't quite happened yet, but it was soon to be. Micah came in like a lawyer in a courtroom saying, hear ye, hear ye people. This is what the Lord has to say to you. He got their attention all right, but they didn't like what he was saying. He told them the Lord was gonna come and tread on the high places where they were worshiping idols. And he was gonna melt those mountains just like fire would melt a candle or just like water was going to come down off of a mountain and make deep, deep troughs. If I'm here in my garden and I'm watering and I lay my water hose down, it's going to make all the earth that's in front of that water hose just move out of the way. It's going to change the shape and the look of my flower bed. But that's exactly what God was wanting to do to the Southern Kingdom. He wanted to change everything about them, especially what was in their hearts. So he empowered Micah to boldly come and bring this message. Micah said, hear ye, hear ye, God is coming to bring judgment against you. And Micah knew that the wound that the people of Judah had inflicted upon themselves by not obeying God was going to be one that was incurable, one that he could not stop how far it was going to hurt. And it hurt Micah. He said, I'm going to go around barefooted and naked because I'm in such sorrow about the way that your country is. And that's exactly what he did. When people in biblical times were in deep sorrow, they would tear their clothes and walk around naked and barefoot so that everyone would knew, know that they were mourning. Micah was mourning what condition the people were in. There were three kings that Micah ministered to. The first one's name was Jotham, and he was a good king, except he didn't pull down the high places. And then when he had a son named Ahaz, Ahaz was evil and he led the people right back into their idol worship using those same high places. So Hezekiah learned a few things from Jotham and Hezekiah was Ahab's son. So one of the first things he did was tear down all the high places. And Hezekiah really did try to follow what the Lord said and to lead his people as king, worshiping the one true living God. He did a good job. He did such a good job that when the Assyrian army tried to come and take Israel right after they took the northern kingdom, God defended Hezekiah with an army of angels that killed all the Assyrians. So that's what happens when you do right. God will defend you. He will take care of you. And because of what Hezekiah did, the Babylonians that were gonna come and take the southern kingdom of Judah captive. They didn't come for another 135 years. It kept the people of Judah having a little bit more time to repent. They didn't, but God gave them a little bit more time because every time Hezekiah had a challenge, he brought that challenge before the Lord and said, what do you want me to do? And the Lord would say, I got you back. Don't worry about it. And God was true to his word. In that courtroom, Micah said, I'm bringing witnesses that the Lord has told me to bring against you. Because that's what happens in a courtroom. They state the charge and then they bring in witnesses. Only these witnesses were going to be the very mountains that God said he was going to melt like wax. The places where the people had worshipped other gods. Micah said, these mountains and these hills that you've gone on to worship, that you thought it would get you closer to your gods, they're the ones that are going to witness against you because they're the ones that could say, I saw what they did on those mountains. 
So in a courtroom, the witnesses are brought, and then the proof of what they did. And the proof was Micah saying the things that the wealthy people had been doing. The wealthy people would lay in their beds at night trying to figure out all kinds of schemes and ways that they could rob people of their land and their property so that they would be wealthier. And scripture says that when they would wake up in the morning, they would walk out the plans they had dreamed up at night because they were wealthy. They had the power to do that. Micah also says that God had great grievances against the merchants because they were cheating. They were not using the same scales to buy and sell. And God said that everything that they earned through their cheating would be taken away from them. And their tongues knew nothing but lies. They lied to everyone and they had lied so long and so much, they didn't even know what the truth was. So the liars of the merchants and the wealthy schemers, they were gonna be punished for what they had done. And God said that their enemies were gonna make fun of them, saying that God had abandoned them and given their lands to their enemies. And that's exactly what is going to happen. But the people started telling Micah to stop prophesying. Stop saying this to us. This isn't going to happen. God isn't going to have us taken away. This country named Babylon is too small to take us. We're Israel. We're a big country. Little did they know that wasn't going to happen for another 135 years. And even though they couldn't see it, it was indeed going to happen. But then they said, hey, you can't, you can't say this. God's not going to do this. We are Israel. We are Judah. We are God's chosen special people. We have the temple. We are in Jerusalem. God wouldn't dare lay his hand against us. What would other people think? What was other people going to think if God didn't discipline his own children? Scripture said, if you love your child, you will discipline your child. And that doesn't mean beating your child. It means training your child up to do right. God had trained them up in the wilderness, but they weren't obeying. So they've got some punishment that's going to come. The people, Micah said, would raise their hands and say, I am righteous. I belong to God. But the other hand was grabbing for someone's shirt, trying to rip it and steal it from them. God didn't like this. God didn't like this at all. And that's why he sent Micah. Micah was trying to explain to them. They didn't do anything but seek after pleasure. This is our flesh. And our flesh wants things. They want to be fed. They want to have something to drink. They want to sleep. They like pleasant things. Our flesh is always crying out to us. And Satan knows that. So he tries to tempt us with our flesh to get us to have more pleasure and more pleasure and more pleasure. You know, if I had two plates of food right now, one of them would be a chocolate cake and some ho-hos, some Twinkies, some Skittles, all kinds of sweet candy things. And in the other plate, I had a good meal. Meatloaf, greens, squash, maybe some cornbread, which one would you choose? Your taste buds would probably say, give me the candy, give me the candy. But that candy wasn't going to make strong bones. It wasn't going to make strong teeth. It wasn't going to feed you nutritionally. It would give you a little bit of energy for a little while, and then it would make you really grumpy. But this good, wholesome meal over here would feed you what God wanted you to eat so that you could be healthy. It was the same thing with pleasure with these people. All they wanted was what they wanted, when they wanted it, and they wanted it right then. Our society is much like that right now. So getting back to the courtroom, Mike is in there and, and he's saying, I have evidence. I have more evidence against you. He said, the leaders of Judah have not been doing what God wanted them to do. Any leader is supposed to lead the people in righteousness and doing right. But these leaders loved evil and they hated good. And the worst thing about them, 
they took bribes so that other people could get their way. These leaders were supposed to be judges saying this person did right, this person did wrong. But if someone had money and they had done wrong and they come to the leader and would say, here, take this money and just say I did right, the leader would say they did right. And if someone who was actually righteous, who was being accused of something they didn't do to cover up someone else's sins, and they didn't have the money to bribe the leaders, they got punished. Scripture says that these leaders would skin people alive and chop their bones up and put them in a stew pot. That's not good. After the leaders, Micah started bringing evidence against the priest. Now, God had told the priest to teach the people his laws and to encourage them to do right. But these priests would not teach anybody anything unless they were paid a hefty price. And the people that were wealthy could get the training, but people that were poor could not. So it was not fair. Just like the leaders were not being fair. They were not executing justice the way they were supposed to. The priests were not teaching the people the way they were supposed to. And then Micah moved on to the prophets. Oh my. There were so many false prophets in the land. And people would want them to come and tell them their futures and tell them what was going to happen. And if the people gave them wine and alcohol and gave them food to eat, the prophets would say whatever the people wanted to hear. And if they told people, give me something and I'll prophesy for you, and they didn't, then the prophets would say bad things were going to happen to them. The leaders, the priests, and the prophets, they were all led by greed. They were all just trying to line their pockets so that they could follow the pleasurable things that they wanted to do. You know, Micah said, I'm not like these false prophets. I'm anointed by God. And I want to say what God says for me to say. I have the Holy Spirit inside of me, and that's what's empowering me. And you should listen to me. Well, the people weren't really wanting to give up their evil ways. So, in that courtroom, Micah just kept bringing one charge right after the other. And finally, the people started saying, okay, well, maybe he's got something here. Uh, how do we get out of this? What can we give him? Can we sacrifice bulls? Can we give offerings? What do we need to do to bribe our God so he won't have us go into captivity in Babylon? Because Micah told him, when they come to take you away, you're not going to have any pleasure. There's not going to be anything good. You are going to be taken captive. You are going to be working for someone else and not get any pay. You won't be able to save anything because you won't be getting anything. And if you do get something, it's going to be taken away from you. You're going to eat, but you're not going to be satisfied. None of the things you're used to doing are you going to be able to do when you get taken into captivity. You are going to have time to sit there and think. Just like your fathers had time to think when God brought them out of Egypt in slavery into the wilderness to learn his ways. These people didn't even realize they were slaves to the pleasures of their own bodies. But God was trying to help them. And it, it would look like a punishment, and it was a punishment for them to be taken captive, but it was going to be the best thing for them. Because God was going to give them an opportunity to sit and think about what they had done and to weigh out whether or not it was worth continuing doing what they were doing or allow God to change their hearts. And that's what God wanted. He wanted them to have a changed heart. So when the people were asking, what can we do to bribe our God not to do this? Micah said, you still don't get it. It's not sacrifices that God wants. He wants your heart to be changed. He wants you to be fair, be just with everyone. He wants you to love kindness. He wants you to love mercy. He wants you to do right, do just, love mercy. And he wants you to walk humbly. That means to obey God, to walk humbly with God. Those were the three things Micah told them that God wanted. And they're going, oh man, you know, we just really can't do that. We, we 
like doing what we're doing and we're going to keep doing it. So, just like in a courtroom, there comes a time and place where the judge takes his gavel and he goes, guilty. Now comes the punishment phase. That's exactly what Micah said to him. You better get ready. Because Babylon's going to come take y'all captive. So you need to prepare yourself. Micah said he felt like a miserable fruit picker that had picked fruit all day long and still didn't have anything to eat. Micah had preached and prophesied and prophesied and preached. And these people just were not listening to him. He didn't know what else to do. So what he did do is he started telling the people, don't be afraid to go to Babylon. He said, if I did something wrong and God punished me, I would wait out my punishment patiently because I would trust God to take care of me and not keep me in punishment forever, but to restore me. And anything bad that happened to me, he would make sure it was made right because God loves me and he loves y'all too. And when you're taken into Babylon, there's going to be a group of people who's going to let God change their hearts. And they're going to be called the remnant. And they're going to bless many people in Babylon because they're going to see the faith that this remnant has for God to deliver them from their captivity. And they're going to be inspired by it. And believe me, God is going to bring you back this is what Michael was saying to Judah. Because he loves you, he's going to bring you back and restore you and rebuild your cities. But you have got to go through this time of punishment. You've got to take the consequences for your sin to teach you what you need to do right. Michael was doing everything he could to tell them. In the fifth chapter of Micah, we have something said that is not said anywhere else in the Bible. Micah says, God is going to bring a king out of a small town named Bethlehem. This king is going to be born in Bethlehem. And he's going to lead all of God's people to God's holy mountain. And at that time, he's going to rule forever and ever. I bet you know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about Jesus. One of the reasons that God was being so kind to the southern kingdom and didn't wipe them out like he did with the northern kingdom was he had made a promise to David that he was going to bring a king through his lineage and Jesus was that king. And Micah is prophesying about that time when Jesus would come back. Now that hadn't happened yet. But Jesus was born in Bethlehem. And Micah's prophecies tell us about that. And Michael's pro Micah's prophecies go on to say that Jesus is going to be like a shepherd, leading that remnant, and he would judge and rule on the throne as king. And there would be no need to have weapons because there wasn't going to be any war. All the weapons were going to be hammered into plows to plow the land for planting and harvesting and all the spears were going to be turned into knives that would then prune the trees that needed to be pruned. Michael was trying to give them hope and encouragement telling them just believe and that's what we're still supposed to do. Jesus hasn't come back yet but he's going to and when he does he's going to do exactly what he said in Micah He's going to be doing exactly what is said in Amos, what is said in Isaiah, what is said in Jeremiah, and all the other prophets. Our job is to have faith, trust, and believe. Micah says that the Lord's house is going to be on the highest mountain and that people are going to pour in from all nations because they're going to want to worship God as well. That remnant is going to be strong like a lion. And everybody is going to recognize that they are God's people. That's a really important thing to do. To be recognized as God's people. You know, right now, you're in kind of a wilderness. 
you're sheltered in your home and God's giving you a time out, giving the whole world, not just one nation. He's giving the whole world an opportunity to see where they are not following him, where they are not obeying his laws. And he is gonna let us come out of this sheltered time. And when we do, I'm curious to see what we're gonna do with it. I'm curious to see if our hearts are gonna be changed like the remnant that came back from Babylon. You know, Judah never worshiped idols again after they were brought back. They had learned their lesson. I'm praying in the name of Jesus that we learn our lesson. Whatever areas of our life that we're just seeking pleasure, that we take it before the Lord and ask if it's what God wants us to do. Because if it's not, we need to stop doing it so that when we come out of this sheltered time, we can be a light to the world like this remnant was that was gonna be brought from Babylon, like the remnant is gonna be that's gonna be taken into God's holy mountain when Jesus comes back. Anytime there's a future prediction, it is to prepare us for what is to come so that we will be ready. And Jesus says, we are supposed to stay ready for him to come back. We're supposed to keep our hearts washed clean every day of any unforgiveness or anger or sin in our life. Jesus said that he gives us a gift of peace that nothing in the world can give us and nothing in the world can take it away when we have it inside of us. When we ask Jesus to be our Lord and Savior, God puts his Holy Spirit inside of us to counsel us about what is right and what is wrong and to help give us strength to do right. God gave Micah strength through the Holy Spirit to be bold in what he was telling the people because what he was telling the people was the truth and the people needed to hear it. Can you be bold when you come out of your shelter and tell people the ways that God has shown you that you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't do that? I mean, maybe he's trying to teach you to put those video games down and pick up the Bible and actually learn what God has for you. Maybe you could pick up your Bible and actually read the seven chapters of Micah because what I've been able to do in this teaching today is not teach you everything that's there. And I'm sure that the Holy Spirit could minister to you some things that I haven't even said. And if you take this challenge and you do it, and you read something that I have not taught today, you call me up on the phone, let me know, and I'll be sure in the next video to say, hey, you know, this person called me and told me I left this out. So I'm gonna make sure to try to teach what God is telling me to teach y'all today, and the things I leave out, maybe he's having me leave them out on purpose so that you can seek them out yourself. Micah does one more thing, you know, Praying is very important. Jesus taught the disciples how to pray. Jesus also told the disciples that when we come before the Lord, we need to come with a right motive. When I was growing up, there was a peace sign that everybody said, peace, peace. You know, Jesus has a peace sign that's different from this. It's this. It's the cross. He also taught that the way to pray was not so that you could get what you wanted, but what God wanted for you. And Micah says a prayer, and it's in alignment with God's will, not only for these people of Judah, but for the remnant that would come back and for the remnant that's going to go and be with Jesus forever. Micah prayed and asked that God would be like a shepherd leading his flock home because they were his own possession. And you know what God said? Yes. When we pray according to the will of God and ask anything, especially if we ask it in Jesus' name, God says yes because he wants his will to be done. We're like a, a radio that receives waves. God is sending us messages all the time to pray a certain thing. And when we receive that and say it out loud, it moves the hand of God. We act as a receiver of God's word 
And then when we pray and ask, God says, all right, I was just waiting for somebody to say yes to me. Don't think your prayers are too small because you're five or six or seven or 13 or 16 or, or 50. Your prayers are important to God and to his people. I pray right now that all of us that are in shelter, let God show us how to do justice, how to love mercy and kindness, and how to walk humbly with him. I pray this right now in the name of Jesus. I know there's been a lot of people that have gotten sick, some that have even died, and their family members are now calling out to God. You may be the only person that a friend of yours knows that knows anything about God. So when you come out of shelter, you're going to be saying, what was all that about? And you would have an opportunity to say, well, the way I look at it, God was trying to get his people's attention. God was trying to get everybody's attention to say there's a better way, a way that will bring you peace, not just following pleasure, but a way that would bring you peace. And that's the kind of peace that I pray you are able to have. This kind of peace. The kind of peace that Jesus brings. The kind of peace that he paid a price for on the cross so that you can have it in your heart. I love y'all. I thank you very much for listening to me today. And I look forward to those phone calls that said, Sister Teresa, you forgot this part. Until next week. Be good. Love, mercy, and walk humbly with God.